Hello. Hi. Uh, so I'm David. Hey. <laughs> and uh, bonjour. Uh, yes, I live in Paris, and where I work for UNESCO. And uh, I'm here with my colleague Mizako. She's uh, in the UNESCO office in Bangkok. And we are both from the what is called the communication information sector, uh, which is doing a number of things. But among these things, it's doing the, uh, the work that I'm going to present now. And we start by, um, OK, let's, let's me briefly maybe say that two words also about the communication information sector. We do work on a different range of areas, one from uh, the promotion of media, media development, to the use of ICT in different uh, domains, including uh, you know, ICT for persons with disabilities or, or for uh, uh, creation, and we'll see about that. And, uh, and also in this, in this uh, sector, we also promote the uh, openness as a value. And this means that we're also promoting um, open, source, open source software, we're promoting open access to scientific information, and the openness uh, linked to uh, educational resources. UNESCO, I don't know, you, do you know UNESCO? Who, who, about, who knows UNESCO here? Oh la la. And what do you know about UNESCO? It's probably the World Heritage Sites. Yes, <laughs> but uh, we do mo more than this. We do uh, mostly about uh, work about education and, 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 and science. So this is uh, the, the core of uh, our, our work, although most of us know about UNESCO and the World Heritage. So we start from uh, uh, a, a, um, an observation. An observation is that uh, uh, now, IT, internet, etc., they are in the, our, our ends, in everybody's end, and this is going to increase. So basically, uh, we talk about digital natives because uh, not like people like me that were, were I, I was there when uh, the f first presentation was on, uh, knowing all the history of internet, using Netscape uh, uh, browser, etc. But today's people, they just no, they, they just come to life and they immediately have access to internet. So the question that we asked is uh, this. Do, how we, no, do we have a conscious uh, you know, understanding of what is, are we using? So in other words, I see a couple of kids here around playing with tablets. So do, do we know what are we doing? So, do we know what is behind this? So basically, it's like TV, no? We are used to TV. It's a, it's a black box, let's say, that uh, uh, f gives images. But do we know how it works? Why these images are coming to us? And who is deciding which images are, are going to us? So this is uh, a bit uh, the question. And the question is the same today with uh, social media. Social media is great, right? You all tweet, maybe you all use, uh, I don't know, Facebook or other social medias, etc. But uh, at the end of the day, this is maybe a sort of illusion, illusion of uh, interactivity where you say, okay, I can do whatever I want. I can talk to my neighbor, I can talk to my, to my friends, and I, wow, I can do, I can share photos, I can do a lot of things, I can do everything. But in fact, what I can do is uh, I can do because someone decided that I can do it, or someone wrote some code that <laughs> enabled me to do it, right? So we are just, you know, basically, uh, so users of, of technology, and we are happy about that because these technologies are great. So, in other words, is that uh, why should not we know what happens when I click something on a computer, on a tablet, on a phone? What happens when I click I like? Nobody knows. Just that, uh, oh, my friend received that, uh, the message that uh, I like something on, on, on Facebook, for example. Yeah, but what is behind this? What is behind this is uh, a whole world of things. It's a world of uh, knowing about uh, uh, no, flux of data going through uh, servers, uh, people working on the servers. Uh, people dispatching the information, machines dispatching the information, and, uh, and it's an old world which needs to be understood. And basically, you know, 
isn't understanding how things work and uh, trying to master them because I understand how these things work. Isn't this about FOSS? Isn't this about open source? Is this because I wanted to know how the thing works so that I can improve it maybe and make it better or I can use it the way I want? We had uh, a, sp a speech on, on, the, uh, on the laws, on the, on the laws of uh, uh, FOSS. So this uh, is the, the Youth Mobile Initiative. Why Youth Mobile? It's a title, it's a name that uh, you know, we, we have uh, tried to, well, we can try to capture two basic elements. One is the youth, because uh, the next generation is the generation that uh, we should uh, look at, and the, all these uh, digital natives. And mobile, because mobile is, the, of course, a trendy word. Everybody has a mobile in, the, in their pockets. So more, probably many people have also two or three mobiles in their pocket. So that's uh, where, uh, where it works. And, uh, and the idea of the, I mean, the, the overall, let's say, uh, goal and uh, uh, idea behind is uh, can we promote the teaching of uh, how to make apps to young people so that uh, it's not only using the apps that are, uh, the other someone else has done, but also make your own. And uh, you know, it's it's quite uh, nice to to see the eyes of uh, kids when they make their first app. It's uh, it's, it's fantastic. The, the idea of uh, I have created something, I invented something. It's uh, it's uh, you know boosting <laughs> this the entire program. So uh, because we are. Uh, UNESCO, of course, uh, we have a particular kind of you know, stakeholders. We work with, uh, um, especially with uh, you know, government or maybe uh, policy makers or communities of teachers, universities, etc. So, and uh, the first thing that we know is that uh, whatever idea we can have, we are certainly not the first to have, the, have uh, this idea. So, we don't pretend that this is new, right? So. This is far too be from being new. There are many people all over the world who are actually promoting this at different levels. Very small. There are very small uh, initiatives that uh, exist uh, locally with uh, enthusiastic teachers that are promoting these ideas and, in, and trying to do whatever they can to uh, enlarge the uh, mindset of the students and, and to, and to uh, open, open them an entire new world to very large, large initiatives that are uh, you know, worldwide known, like code.org or things like that, where uh, you know, coding is, uh, let's say, taken from a very uh, you know, amusing point of view, where, where you, you, you just uh, you know, manage some characters, do some little programs, et cetera. So this, uh, the first thing that uh, how, how we can uh, help these uh, this kind of initiatives how can we sustain, as uh, UNESCO, as a, an international uh, intergovernmental organization, we have uh, about uh, almost 200 uh, member states uh, composing UNESCO. How can we uh, support these local initiatives and bring them up so that they can set a case, so they can inspire maybe uh, um, policies, maybe they can inspire large universities or schools to, uh, to do these kind of things. So, the same way, we go um, also to, to talk to um, organizations, teachers, associations, etc., to promote this idea. And, uh, and last but not least, uh, of course, we, we, I mean, uh, as far as you look around, you will find uh, two or three f competitions about uh, uh, maybe making apps. There are so many out there in the world. So uh, how can we spread? Uh, this concept, how can we sustain and improve this uh, by maybe linking these competitions to sustainable development issues? How can I, you know, can, can you challenge a school to make an app for, you know, cleaning the roads or some, something like that? So, um, so there are several concepts which are behind this, uh, this uh, how, how to do this. And it goes from uh, thinking, so thinking what is the problem, for example, cleaning roads, to, uh, to think how can this be solved? And here is, there is a, the link with the, with the programming, with coding, you know, programmers. I, I, I used to make software some, some years ago. 
uh, how can you solve the problem? How do you uh, approach the, 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 the problem to find a solution? Is in this called computational thinking, right? So problem solving attitude and uh, technology. Use the technology that you have at your disposal to solve the problem or to, at least to try to solve the problem. And um, maybe at the end of the day, think about the, what going, what's going next, what's going to happen. So can, we, can you think about uh, more long, more long term? Why are people going to use your, uh, your app? Why are, are people going to, um, to buy maybe your app? Why can you develop a little business plan behind to see, okay, I've done this, it's great, but uh, you know, what for? And then finally, bring this to community. Let really people use and, uh, uh, and, 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 and do what, what you thought in the beginning was the solution to the problem. So, in order to do that, there are several actors involved, and, uh, and our program is, uh, is uh, about uh, trying to put everything, all these elements together, from, from teachers, which are essential to um, students, of course, and to uh, local organizations. So the program has uh, uh, some, uh, for us, uh, in, uh, big goals. For this is uh, uh, for us. This is uh, quite uh, large <laughs> in terms of achievements, uh, because this is not only the only thing we do. So we need other people to sustain. And uh, in the this program was uh, initiated like two years ago, and so far we've been uh, working in uh, a number of countries, so 16, 17 countries more or less, uh, and all in different ways. In different ways, meaning that uh, we don't have a package. We don't have a package that uh, would tell you how to do things. But more, we would go and ask, what is the problem in your community? What, how, how do your community works? What, what is the best way in your, in your um, mind, what is the best way to do it in locally? So basically, how would this program work best in this particular area. So this is why in uh, all these different uh, uh, projects and activities, uh, we don't have a unique way of uh, uh, approaching the problem, but uh, it's rather, um, you know, sometimes it's really community workers, sometimes it's uh, really uh, young, young students, sometimes it's university students that may not have ac had access to uh, this kind of trainings um, otherwise. On the other hand, there is another uh, uh, aspect which is very interesting to UNESCO, which is uh, about uh, uh, gender equality. So again, we start from uh, some, uh, some um, observations and which are not very you know, um, equal, which means that uh, uh, most of the time, this, uh, in, in, in many places, let's say, not all, but in many places, uh, uh, Programming, coding, etc. It's a very masculine uh, activity. Basically, there are very few women that are really engaged in this. So we uh, have an idea. Uh, started some programs, some uh, uh, ideas. For example, by uh, trying to leverage the experiences of very incredible girls. This one is uh, uh, one of these girls. It's uh, called. She's, her name is Marta. She's. Uh, uh, I think Mario met her, by the way, and uh, she's very incredible. She's, uh, she was just a young, 17 old years woman who had uh, wanted to go to the U.S. for study. She was, she's from Kenya, but she couldn't get through. So instead of, she, instead of going to the U.S., basically she stayed home and said, okay, what, I, what can I do? Because I just discovered IT. So she opened up a school. And, uh, and, this, and this school, uh, in, a, in a very short time, she, this school was, became a, a little school, but uh, was changing the life of thousands of, uh, young, uh, uh, of young friends of Marta. So can we, <clears throat> can we find other Martas? Can, is it possible, not for me, eh, for, you, for you, for everybody, to find other Martas, other Martas can, uh, that can... Uh, uh, you know, uh, simply uh, do the same and uh, maybe uh, 
uh, teach and inspire other people for for this uh, into entering into coding and programming. So you know we, through the programs we've seen a uh, number of uh, innovations from uh, different uh, uh, pe people, girl, girls, and uh, young people. I think I'm already running out, <laughs> and uh, and also we have been uh, promoting uh, uh, competitions using um, open data. Why? Because, uh, for example, this one is a little competition we ran last year. It was about uh, oceans data. We collect as UNESCO. We have a network of uh, ocean ocean observatory systems where we collect uh, information about oceans. But this information is uh, normally available to scientists only, not to normal people. So can we uh, get access, give access to this data to young people and see, OK, this is a different way to perceive the marine ecosystems. This is a way, different way to see uh, that uh, the, the oceans. And, uh, and the message behind is that uh, finally, these data are available. And why don't you use them? So this uh, is applicable to oceans now, but we can be critical to anything, uh, transparency, etc. after. So to do this program, we work with a number of uh, uh, partners, including Forsasia, and, uh, um, and we look forward to work with even more partners in the future and to expand this program and, and, uh, in, in, in new different countries. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Davide. So I'm a sort of regional hub because I'm based in Bangkok So for, for that program. So for First Asia, we will be having a series of six workshops uh, targeting kids. So I would like to invite you to join those workshops that go from the creation, design, coding, and implementation of uh, mobile uh, application development. We also encourage the use of open data, open educational resources to harness the, the, to harness the use of knowledge and data. Uh, we will be also having the booth through, through the, the next two days, the next three days, including today. So we invite you to come to talk to us if you have any question and in proposal of partnership. Just very briefly, what we are planning to do after this Force Asia event, because UNESCO is an intergovernmental organization, so our stakeholders are basically the governments. So we, but we are promoting and we are serving, we are implementing projects to serve the population and the communities. So we are trying to bring uh, innovative project and a good experience from the bottom to put it in the policy in a way to bridge the gap between policy and practices and also to bridge the gap between formal education and no formal education. So, for example, we will be, uh, we are planning to, um, to create some policy briefs to promote the coding skill uh, as a tool for innovation, free expression, creativity in informal education in Asia. We, we will be also promoting innovative realization from young people uh, in Asia through UNESCO's network, and it's going to be showed in a completely different uh, networks like UNESCO's member state. Uh, we, we will be fostering debate on licenses issues, on open license, and the impact on development and innovation. Uh, and we will continue to enhance the capacity of young people to harness the potential of free and open source software, open data, open educational resources, and with a particular focus in the area where they don't have the chance to access to those you know, to, to, to those training, like in marginalized communities, in rural communities, or in least developed countries. Thank you very much. <laughs>